Hello again, and what is hip? And welcome to my Nintendo Wii collection video. And the Wii is a special console because it was the first system of mine where I started to buy my own video games for it. Uh, I grew up with the GameCube, but I was still on the younger side to where I didn't buy most of my games. Uh, but the Wii, especially with the introduction of the Nintendo Selects, were the first um, games that I really bought for myself uh, for a home console. And uh, the Wii kind of brought me into my teenage years and, and into adulthood and, and all of that. So the Wii is a really special console and uh, even though it's not my favorite Nintendo console by far, I still had a lot of special memories with this video game system. So. Let's get right into it, and we'll start with the game that really started it all, and that's Wii Sports. And just like many other families, Wii Sports was a game that brought my family together. I remember playing this with my grandparents and, and my parents and my siblings, aunts and cousins, my whole entire family. I remember being at my grandparents' house and we all sat around the TV and played Wii Sports, especially bowling. We played a lot of bowling. And uh, my dad did uh, the golf, I, I played the golf as well. And uh, I remember seeing commercials for this uh, before we had a Wii. And uh, I remember the Wii being incredibly hard to come by. We had a local Fred Myers that was always sold out at the system. And I just remember wanting one so bad. And I can't remember when we got ours, if it was for Christmas or a birthday, probably at Christmas. Um, and I remember us making our Miis and putting in Wii Sports. And uh, yeah, Wii Sports, you know, you never would I have thought that a game like this would uh, hold so many memories and really become one of my most treasured games in my collection. Uh, the next game here is Link's Crossbow Training, which was a pack-in uh, with the Wii Zapper accessory, um, which was a cheap little plastic shell that you would put your Wii remote and nunchuck into and it would become like a little crossbow and this was the pack-in and I gotta say this is probably one of the best free pack-in games I've ever played in my life. This is an addicting game. Uh, it's uh, basically just a little shooter where targets pop up and you just have to shoot the targets. Think um, like Duck Hunt or one of those uh, Wii Play games where uh, you're shooting targets and stuff. This is basically the same thing, but with a, a Twilight Princess skin. And uh, there are a lot of stages to choose from, and it's a point system, so you try and get the highest score, and uh, it gets pretty hard. Uh, but it's, it's a lot of fun, and the music is all from Twilight Princess, the graphics, everything is from Twilight Princess, and uh, it's a lot of fun. I remember this was uh, $20 when it first came up. Now you can get these super cheap, like under $5. Uh, pick this up. I, this is a, a hidden gem, so to speak. Um, such a fun, addicting game, and one that not enough people talk about. Uh, but it's dirt cheap. Pick it up, for sure. So here we got the sequel to Wii Sports. Uh, this is Wii Sports Resort. And uh, I got this game uh, relatively recently. Uh, and uh, I had never played Wii Sports Resort before, but I remember watching YouTube videos on this uh, as a kid and uh, really thinking it looked like a lot of fun. And sure enough, it is. It ups Wii Sports in, in every way. The, um, the katana fighting thing is so much fun. Uh, and the frisbee's a lot of fun. Bowling, of course. And the ping table tennis ping pong is a lot of fun. This is just a really great game. And you can get this box here, the big box that comes with the Wii Motion Plus accessory that is required to play this game for like 30 bucks. Um, so, or 35 bucks, and that's a pretty killer deal. Uh, so, Wii Sports Resort, pick this up. I mean, if you've never experienced Wii Sports before, I would start here over the original Wii Sports. It's just, it's a, it's a really great, well put together game. Much better than the new Wii Sports that came out, Nintendo Switch Sports, I think it's called. Uh, so this is The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Uh, this is the collector's edition that came with a special edition uh, Wii remote uh, that had the Wii Motion Plus built inside. And it uh, also came with 
a soundtrack, which all of the Skyward Sword games came with a soundtrack. And what was really special about this game is the soundtrack was entirely orchestrated by, it was played by a live orchestra. Uh, and this was the first Zelda game to do that. And uh, let me tell you, the music in this game is wonderful. I have listened to this CD countless times. And uh, this game gets a lot of hate. Uh, I understand why, but I really, really enjoyed this game. This was really the last linear Zelda game that we got, and the story is really, really wonderful. Uh, I haven't beaten it yet because there are these sections in the game where you have to collect these drops or something, and uh, there are these things that chase after you, and it freaked me out as a kid, uh, so I, I stopped playing after a little while. Um, but I do want to get back to this. I don't know if I'm going to play the Switch one or if I'm going to play the original because the Wii Remote is just better. Um, but this is... I think it's a good game. Is it a great game? I have memories of it being a great game. I actually, I thoroughly enjoyed this game. Uh, it definitely has its problems, but it's, it's beautiful looking, it's beautiful sounding, and the story is really, really strong. One of the better Zelda stories, for sure. Don't sleep on Skyward Sword just because the masses uh, don't entirely enjoy this game. So here we have uh, Super Mario Brothers All-Stars, and this is a 25th anniversary kind of celebration package here uh, that comes with the Super Mario All-Stars uh, game that was on the Super Nintendo, which had Super Nintendo remakes of Super Mario Brothers 1, 2, uh, three and the lost levels and uh, this little package here also includes a little history thing here which comes with a, a booklet and a, a music CD as well which is kind of cool and this was a little I think it was pretty cheap when it came out originally uh, it, honestly it's not that great the disc only comes with Super Mario All-Stars on it I wish they would have included some other things on there uh, they also did a Kirby uh, collection as well, which was much better, had a lot more on it, uh, but I never got that, unfortunately. Uh, now it's a little spendy. You can get this for pretty cheap uh, nowadays. It's, it's, it's a fun little collection. I also have the Japanese one here, uh, and uh, I got this because I remember reading an article way back in the day that this was coming out in Japan, and nobody knew if it was coming out in America, so I asked for it for my birthday, and I actually got it, and that made this my first official import. So that's kind of a, a cool little thing about this, and it was the start of many, many imports to come for me. So here is also a recent pickup. This is Super Mario Galaxy 2, and I had never played Super Mario Galaxy 2 as a kid. I grew up with Super Mario Galaxy, the original, and I loved it to death. Um, and I remember they came out with Super Mario Galaxy 2, but, you know, being a kid, I didn't have a lot of expendable income, so I never picked it up. And uh, I've heard that it was better, and the stages were better, um, the hub world was a little smaller, and the story wasn't really there. Uh, but uh, the gameplay was supposedly improved upon. And uh, I picked this up, I think, last year or so at uh, the Portland Retro Gaming Swamp Meet, and uh, it's a lot of fun. It's, I would have to agree with the masses, I think the gameplay is improved upon from the original, the music is just as great, the graphics are wonderful, and it's such a shame that this was not included on the Super Mario 3D All-Stars collection for the Switch. Yet they included the first one, it makes absolutely zero sense to me. Um, but this is a wonderful game, and you need to have this in your collection. Not just the first Super Mario Galaxy, you have to have the second as well, because it's... It's, it's great. It's really great. Something else that is really great is EA Sports The Masters, also known as Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2012. Uh, and you may be like, what? What, what do you mean? Uh, this is such a fun little golfing game, and it uses the Wii Motion Plus uh, to simulate swinging a golf club, and it actually works really well. I, I play golf uh, some in real life as well, and it actually kind of accurately represents my real world golf swing. It's, it's pretty crazy, but there's like a whole bunch of putt-putt golf, there's uh, a whole bunch of courses, and this game is a little spendy for a sports game. It's like 20-ish bucks or so. Um, 
but this was kind of considered the last great Tiger Woods PGA Tour game. Uh, there was 2013 that came out, which wasn't as good, and then there was Rory McIlroy, uh, which came out a year later, or a couple years later, I think. But um, this is a really solid title, and uh, I'm not super big on sports games, but I do enjoy golf games, and this is a good one. So if you find this for cheap, definitely pick it up. Even if you're not super into sports games, I think it's worth a try, because this could be a fun little party game as well. There's Wii Sports Resort again. Here is a very underrated game, and this is Super Paper Mario. And this game gets a lot of hate because it was the first departure from the traditional uh, Paper Mario kind of formula after the Thousand Year Door. Uh, that game is a masterpiece. And uh, it, they followed it up with this, which was a 2D Paper Mario game with 3D kind of added on as a gimmick. And gameplay-wise, it's not traditional Paper Mario. It's not Paper Mario, in my opinion. However, if you treat it as a standalone game, this is a wonderful game, and it has a story that is one of the best stories that I have played, and not in any Mario game, but in any game in general. The story in this game is so heart-wrenching, and touching and, and tragic and, and laugh out loud hilarious. It may even surpass the original or Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door in regards to story. If not, it's definitely up there. Um, if you look past the fact that this is not your traditional Paper Mario game and you treat this as its own uh, Mario adventure, you're gonna really love this game. All the characters are memorable, the stages are so much fun, and it's, it's, it's really wonderful, and it's a game that I want to go back and replay all over again. And that says something, because I don't do that very often. The only other game I've really done that often with is Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. Um, now here is my favorite Zelda game of all time, and this is The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Um, I bought this with my own money. Uh, this was a Nintendo Selects, and it was my first uh, Wii game that I think I ever bought with my own money. I had rented Twilight Princess many times through the recommendation of my friend back in third grade and I remember falling in love with it and then I got to the water dungeon and I was like, oh this is too hard and I stopped playing it. And then uh, I found out that they released this on the Nintendo Wii on the Selects for $20 and I was like, I have to get it. So I ran down with my allowance money to the store, picked it up, and I played this thing and I beat it and this was back in middle school I think or early early high school freshman year of high school and uh, it was it was so much fun I, I love this it's the story is wonderful the art style is beautiful the music is great it's super dark and uh, I love it I absolutely love it, and it's kind of the underdog in, in the Zelda series, and I'm not entirely sure why, to be totally honest, because it's such a well-made game. Uh, I There are some issues, of course, but there are with every single Zelda game that's been released, and this is this is a real gem, and you can get it for, for pretty cheap. Uh, the Wii version is really good. Uh, if you can't afford the Wii U HD remake, which is kind of expensive, I think it's like 60, 70 plus dollars, but you can get this for under 20. So uh, if you want to save some money, this is also really, really good. The next game here is Pikmin 2, and this is the definitive edition of Pikmin 2. Uh, this is a port of the GameCube classic onto the Wii, and they added some Wii motion controls, which is actually really helpful because you can use the pointer to point where to throw your, your Pikmin. Uh, but this is a really wonderful game. It does not hold up to... It, it's not as good as the original Pikmin, in my opinion, but it's much better than Pikmin 3, I think, and the multiplayer is so much fun in this game. I, I have put so many hours into the multiplayer. Uh, so much fun. It's getting a little expensive, and I think it's only going to get more expensive because uh, uh, it's Pikmin, and the Wii is also just becoming a more expensive system to collect for, which is crazy because uh, it used to be so cheap. But this is a wonderful game, and it should be in everybody's collection. 
New Super Mario Bros. Wii. Um, I don't enjoy this game. I, I didn't like it <laughs> when it came out. There was just something about it that really did not click with me. Uh, I didn't like it compared to the DS version. The, the Wii U version that came out after this was much better, in my opinion. But uh, I did a video on the most average video games, and this was on it. Uh, it's just very vanilla and doesn't... I don't know. I feel like it was lacking creativity. Now, here is Super Mario All-Stars, and this also was lacking for me. I played the GameCube one all of the time, uh, but uh, this really just does not hold a candle. They took away features, and it just was not that great. Uh, the next one here is one that I searched high and low for. Uh, I remember this was when uh, GameStop was doing a total clear out of all of their Wii stuff. And uh, this is Room Factory Frontier. And uh, this is a Harvest Moon spinoff. It's a farming simulator with a bunch of uh, RPG battling elements thrown in. And this is such a good game. I haven't gotten too far into it, but uh, the, the characters are really great and the graphics are fantastic. And I, I really do consider this the last good uh, Rune Factory game because the other ones really just with the most recent Rune Factory 5 release just it wasn't there were a lot of performance issues and it was just not a overall great experience uh, but this is a fantastic experience the music is wonderful a lot of really great uh, cutscenes and character building and gameplay mechanics as well I definitely pick this one up sooner rather than later because this one is also kind of starting to rise in price uh, just like a lot of other Wii games unfortunately. Sega Superstars Tennis. Oh boy this is an average game. Um, it's okay. It has a decent amount of stages but not really that great. Um, yeah I, I would not recommend this one personally. Donkey Kong Country Returns. Now, this is one that I definitely would recommend. Uh, I remember watching E3 back in the day, and all of a sudden we hear that Donkey Kong music, and they show off Donkey Kong Country Returns. And this was the very first time we'd seen a Donkey Kong game in many, many years. And uh, a Donkey Kong Country game. And this was made by Retro Studios, and it was fantastically hard and fun at the same time. Uh, the perfect mix, really, and it's one that you can find time and time again out in the wild. It's very common. Uh, there's one on the 3DS as well, but I would stick with the Wii version. Uh, just runs a little bit better. Even though the 3DS one has some extra content, I, I do think the Wii one is an overall better experience, in my opinion. There is some added on motion controls, which is kind of annoying that the 3DS does get rid of. Um, so you know, pick which one, but this is a fantastic game and it, it's so much fun. And I, I really do consider this to be probably the best of the recent Donkey Kong Country games that I have played personally. Although Tropical Freeze looks really, really fun. I haven't played too much of it, uh, but from what I played, it was really fun. This is Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. I had to double check there. Uh, this, you know, you wouldn't expect it, but this is such a well-crafted game. It is so much fun. Uh, the, the recreation of Hogwarts Castle in here is really wonderful. It's huge. It's absolutely huge. And the graphics are pretty good on the Wii as well. And I believe the Wii version had some extra content. I could be wrong. Uh, but I have played through this game and I've had a lot of fun. It's, uh... It's a really good game. It uses some motion controls for the spells, of course, but it actually works decently well. And uh, the voice acting is pretty good. Uh, it's just an overall a really fun game. If you're a fan of the Harry Potter universe and the games, you can't go wrong with half Blood Prince. It's still pretty cheap. Um, and I consider this to be the best Harry Potter game 
ever. Uh, we'll see if Hogwarts Legacy surpasses it, and so far it definitely seems like it is. Uh, here we got Order of the Phoenix, the precursor to Half-Blood Prince. This is also a really good game, but not as good. Uh, this is the one that kind of started it all with the, the Hogwarts recreation and all of that, and it's still very, very good on its own right. However, Half-Blood Prince is definitely the superior version, so if you're only going to get one, get the Half-Blood Prince. WarioWare Smooth Moves. This is fun, and it's so underrated, and I don't know why. Uh, this is a WarioWare game. I think this is one of the last great WarioWare games. It's uh, basically just WarioWare with the Wii Remote. And uh, yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Uh, there, It's hilarious uh, when they introduce... There's different ways to hold the remote and they introduce it with a, a cutscene and it's like a melancholic, uh, just calm yoga sounding low radio voice describing how to do these different remote control functions and it's hilarious every time they come up. It's hard. Sometimes the Wii remote doesn't quite, it doesn't recognize the Wii remote sometimes and that's really annoying, but most of the time I would say that it works pretty well. Here is Rayman Origins, the one that kind of started it all with this uh, new rendition of the Rayman games, and it's really, really fun. Uh, they came out with Rayman Legends after this, which I think is the superior game overall, uh, but this one is really good as well. It's a beautiful hand-drawn aesthetic and uh, just great platforming, fast-paced fun. An absolute must-buy, in my opinion. And I think it came out on some other systems. I could be wrong. Uh, I think it came out first on the Wii, though. Here is Animal Crossing City Folk, and this gets a lot of hate, and I understand why. They introduced the city mechanic, which you could get on a bus and you'd go to a hub where all the shops and everything were there, and it kind of got rid of the special visitor visitors visiting your town and whatnot, uh, and I, I wasn't a big fan of that, but I did enjoy the game itself. Um, just a lot of fun. It's uh, and it's basically Wild World put onto the big screen. Uh, so it wasn't introducing a lot. Uh, and I do believe that this was the beginning of the fall of the Animal Crossing series. But it's still a very good game in its own right. It was the first game that really uh, I got into uh, wi the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection. So I would play with other people I met on forums and we would hold little special like competitions and stuff in the game and that was a lot of fun. Uh, I remember we did a wrestling competition off where we'd make a little wrestling ring with pitfalls around the corners and we tried to push each other off and that was that was a blast and it'd be little prizes and whatnot. Just a, a really really fun game and it was kind of fun uh, recording this for the, the video and seeing my own my old town and everything that I did many, many years ago. So that was a blast from the past. Here is Harvest Moon Magical Melody, and this is one of my favorite Harvest Moon games of all time. Probably my second favorite. Uh, the art style, I think, is dorky and ugly and not good, but the gameplay is a lot of fun. There's so much to do in this game. Everything from choosing your own plots of land to, to build your farm and and uh, all of the different uh, stores that open up throughout the, your time playing this game. And there's even a little bit of rivalry in this game where you have to collect these musical notes before your farm rival does. And that adds a little bit of attention and, and uh, just, uh, just, you know, you gotta, you gotta do it before the, the time limit runs out uh, in that aspect. So it's, it's such, a, such a fun game. And uh, this was a came out on the GameCube and then it was ported through the Wii and this was technically a GameStop exclusive, interestingly enough, but I played this for many, many hours on the GameCube and many, many hours on the Wii and it's just such a, a really fun game and one that deserves a remake, for sure. Here is one of my favorite games of all time. This is Fragile Dreams and this does not get talked about nearly enough. Uh, 
I might even make a separate video on this alone, but it's a, it's a horror-esque RPG uh, set in a post-apocalyptic type uh, Tokyo where you play as this kid going around trying to get to the Red Tower and you meet wonderful characters along the way and the story is so heart-wrenching, it's, 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 it's crazy. And there's a bunch of side stories that you find throughout the game that are completely optional that are equally amazing and in-depth and just it's done really really well it's a beautiful beautiful game and it even has a reverse uh, art cover right here which is kind of cool um, I think it was the first Wii game to have a reversible art cover I think I could be wrong uh, but this game is getting up there in price it's pretty expensive uh, but I don't see them porting this game anytime soon either, so I see this game continuing to rise in price, so I would recommend you pick this up sooner rather than later. You won't be sorry. This is my favorite Smash Brothers game of all time, and this is Super Smash Brothers Brawl, which is uh, not many people's favorite, uh, to say the least, but I grew up with this. I, I started with Melee on uh, the GameCube, but then I got this, and I remember playing the story mode and just having so much fun. It was Subspace and Missionary, a Missionary? Something like that? Um, but it was like a genuinely good story, and the gameplay was fun, and it was such a blast to play through, and uh, this was the first time they brought in uh, non-Nintendo characters into the roster, so we have Sonic the Hedgehog and we have Snake, as well, which is really fun. I remember seeing Sonic for the first time and I was like, whoa, Sonic's in a Nintendo game? This is insane. Um, but this is really great. The the intro cutscene with the music and everything still gives me chills. It gave me chills when I was recording the gameplay footage for this video. Um, just a really wonderful game and one that I think gets a lot of undeserved hate. Granted, I'm not a professional fighter, a game What's the word? I'm not a professional at uh, the fighting genre of games, uh, but uh, you know, I dabble in them. So maybe that's why I, I love it so much. I, I heard that you know, if you play these games professionally or really hardcore, that there's some things in this game that don't really hold up in regards to that. So I don't know, but it's such a good game. You can get it for dirt cheap. A must have for any Wii collection. And it's different enough from the newer Smash Brothers games to differentiate itself and to justify that purchase. So the next game here is GoldenEye 007 for the Nintendo Wii, and this is a remake, reimagining of sorts of the Nintendo 64 uh, GoldenEye, and this knocked it out of the park. Uh, this is so much fun to play. I played through this game multiple times when I was younger, and the way it works with the Wii uh, remote just works so incredibly well, and it performs surprisingly well as well, lots of wells. Um, but it's just, it's such a great reimagining of the Nintendo 64 classic. The multiplayer was a lot of fun as well, and the stages look great, and it's a really good looking Wii game. So, so it really deserves to be in your collection for sure. And here we got Super Mario Galaxy, one of the best Mario games of all time. Uh, this was such a fun game. I remember when it came out and I had such a blast uh, playing this, and uh, the soundtrack in this game is my favorite Mario soundtrack to date. Uh, I have the CD and I, I still listen to it to this day. It's just so beautifully orchestrated, the graphics are, are wonderful, the story is really touching, uh, even if it's not a super in-depth story, it, it's just really, it's really wonderful. What is there to say about Super Mario Galaxy that has not already been said? Uh, it's probably in your collection, but if it's not, put it in your collection. Absolutely. So here is Harvest Moon Animal Parade, which is in the beginning of the downfall of Harvest Moon. Uh, it started with Tree of Tran Tranquility, which was also released on the Wii, and that was the first mediocre Harvest Moon game, in my opinion. This improved upon it by a lot. Uh, this was a very good game and a lot of fun. There's a lot of performance issues though, and it's nowhere near as good as Magical Melody that I just showed. Um, but it's still a solid game. If you're looking for a new farming simulator that you have not played yet, 
and you haven't played Animal Parade, pick it up, give it a try. Uh, it's, it's a solid title, there are performance issues, and it's not as open-ended as, as some other Harvest Moon games, but it's still a lot of fun, and I think it deserves to be uh, checked out. So that is my Nintendo Wii collection. It's not the biggest, but uh, a lot of these games I've had since I was uh, a young child. So they all mean a lot to me, and uh, there are still lots of Wii games that I would like to add to my collection at some point. Um, but they're starting to rise in price, so I should probably do that sooner rather than later, and so should you. Uh, but uh, do you have any memories with the Nintendo Wii? What are some of your favorite Nintendo Wii games? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to talk about it. But thank you so much for sticking through this video, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. Have a good one.